This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are going to be doing something that a lot of you have been waiting to do or waiting for us to do for a little while and that is dive into Gen 3 specific mass airflow tuning or uh, math scaling as it were. Uh, but first, let's talk about a couple of reasons why you might want to do this. Uh, even if you haven't really done anything to modify the intake track on your, uh, around your mass airflow meter, you have to realize that the values that are in your tune are kind of a baseline factory uh, value that is not going to be exactly dialed in for your setup regardless. Even if your vehicle is 100% stock, you can still uh, pick up some efficiency and possibly some power by uh, adjusting the scaling to your mass airflow sensor uh, based on your vehicle. Every vehicle is a little bit different, every sensor is a little bit different. Because of that there is some potential to actually make things run a little bit better by making these adjustments. And This is fairly easy to do so I suggest anybody that's still running the mass airflow sensor go ahead and do this. Now let's talk about when you have to do this. Uh, you have to do this anytime you go forced induction and you're blowing through the mass airflow sensor. You have to do this anytime you adjust the intake tubing sizing uh, up or down. Uh, you know, and that can also be the results of doing something like forced induction where you are exceeding your mass airflow lens sensor limits. If you exceed your limits, you can solve that by going to a larger air intake and our duct and that will actually change the scaling of your mass airflow sensor. I've talked about this in link uh, in some other videos. I'll put some links up in the corners uh, throughout this video or you can check out the tuning section. Uh, there will be a link down in the description. Uh, there's a couple videos in there such as why we tune math, math versus speed density, stuff like that. If you have not watched those videos already, I suggest before you get into the process of tuning your math sensor, go ahead and watch those videos so you have a better understanding of how the math operates and why we tune the math sensor. That being said, uh, we are tuning on a P59 ECU today, but for the most part, all generation threes are gonna be about the same. So first things first, let's dive into the tune. You want to save a uh, save as your existing tune that is in the vehicle. Make sure you save a copy of that save as, and then save another copy as your first step tune like we do on all of our other ones. That way we have a baseline that we can refer back to. It really makes it easy whenever we need to go back and change uh, some of these back to what they were beforehand. Specifically, whenever we do mass airflow tuning, we have to make sure that the mass airflow sensor is the only thing that's controlling uh, fueling throughout the whole range and so there's a couple things that we change in here and you know so we'll also disable like the O2 sensors we won't so we can't go into closed loop so we don't have any of those things skewing off everything so that being said let's dive into we'll look into uh, some of the things that we need to change on here and basically everything's going to be underneath airflow and fuel for this so underneath the engine button Underneath the airflow, let's look at general, see if there's anything we need to adjust on here. We're not worried about VE. Dynamic is where we have mass airflow and uh, uh, volumetric efficiency working together. We want to make sure that we disable dynamic airflow. And by doing that, uh, to do that, we want to go ahead and drop this high RPM disable way down. So it says above this, use filtered air map. Uh, filtered math air mass for the air mass prediction calculations. So by lowering this below our idle set point, this will always be using our mass airflow sensor for those calculations. So we can set this thing to like 100 RPMs and we're good to go there. Okay, now moving over to the fuel tab. Some of the things that we're going to want to change here is one is on the oxygen sensors. We want to disable the long-term fuel trims on the uh, Gen 3s, the easiest way to do that is to adjust the engine coolant temp set points and it says below this uh, set point LF, LTFT is disabled so let's max this out. I will, I'm going to go 284. You never want these things to be the same, uh, especially on the Gen 3s. It can cause some wonkiness. You never want to use the max value on any of these also. So if it's 285 is your max value, I always like to go at least one below that. And then if you have something like this that's already set to 285, I like to go one below that in addition. So by doing 284, we will say that below this temperature, we will not have the LTFTs working. Uh, we can also go into this closed loop enable. We don't want to enable closed loop. We want to stay in open loop, which keeps the O2 sensors out. 
And we can also max this table out. So basically, if you look at this, it will talk about, look at your tool description down below. It says, this table sets the coolant temperature required to enable closed loop. We don't ever want to do that. It maxes out at 285. So we're going to highlight this whole table, set it to 284, and then hit the equal button. Now this table is maxed out at 284. These two things will guarantee that we do not go into closed loop and that we do not enable LTFT fueling versus our maps. And that is LTFT, if you've already been driving this vehicle, which you have, I mean, let's be honest, you're not gonna do this from the showroom floor. Uh, there is a base map on top of the existing maps based that looked at your O2 sensors and populated the long-term fuel trims and then adds that to dial it in. That's how they get away with putting kind of a stock version of the math curve in there and a stock version of the VE tables. Then they let the long-term fuel trims dial it in specific to your vehicle. We're disabling all that so your mass airflow sensors or your VE table is specific to your vehicle. That is the most efficient way to operate. Let's go ahead and look underneath some of these other tabs. Uh, you know, open loop, we're not worried about on that. Power enrichment, we're gonna leave power enrichment enabled because this affects your commanded AFR or your commanded EQ table. And by doing so, whenever it actually commands a different AFR, we should see that on our air to fuel wideband and it should match up. The reason that people will tell you to disable power enrichment is because they're telling you how to do it through long-term fuel trim uh, tuning, which is not an effective way of doing tuning. I've talked about this at length. You really need to have a wide band on there because narrow bands cannot operate underneath power enrichment. They Narrow bands are required to switch zero and one whenever they are around stoic. And whenever you're in power enrichment, you're very rich. And so your narrow bands will just read one state, not switching back and forth between zero and one. Because of that, you have to disable power enrichment, which makes it very dangerous because your engine cylinder temperature will get very high whenever you're doing wide open throttle uh, pulls trying to tune that way. But since we're using a wide band on this setup, we can leave power enrichment enabled. Power enrichment will then tell our commanded AFR or EQ ratio to adjust down to this number, say 0.85 lambda, and we will see that commanded and then it will match up to our uh, AFR or our wideband gauge. And because of that, we get an accurate error ratio that we can use to tune on. Underneath the temperature control, we always want to disable the catalyst over temp. Uh, that just allows additional fuel to go into the exhaust to keep the cast from over temp. Uh, we should never hit that really anyways, but to be safe, we'll disable that during the tuning process. This is one of the things that we will turn back on also afterwards. Uh, same with deceleration fuel cutoff. Uh, the enable ECT is at 285. Let's bump that up to 284 so we never enable that. And then on some uh, manuals, it might be in a different location. Easiest one would probably be the enable clutch transition. This one is already at temp 285. Uh, because this is an automatic. If this were a manual, this value here would be less, and then you would max this one out for the manual to keep the manual from going into DFCO. So that's basically all we have to do to get the tune ready to go for mass airflow tuning. A little bit simpler than speed density. You can save this as I said as step one. Go ahead and load it in. Now let's go over to the scanner and build out our histogram. Okay, now we're going to jump over to the scanner. The things that you need to be logging for the mass airflow is, for one, the... Uh, mass airflow sensor and it should be in hertz there's going to be mass airflow then there's going to be mass airflow sensor mass airflow is going to be like your pounds per hour the actual mass reading we need the one that reads in hertz which is generally called the mass airflow sensor because that's the one that ties directly to what the mass airflow sensor is outputting to the ecu on top of it we need to log our uh, commanded afr and then our wideband AFR. Or if you're tuning in Lambda, we need to do our commanded EQ and our wideband Lambda readings. First things first, let's go over here. Let's create a, go to grass layout and we're gonna hit the add table. And the parameter that we're gonna to wanna to add in here is our AFR. So let's go down all the way to the bottom under maths, Lambda and AFR and choose AFR error. Then we want to bump the decimal out to two places. I always like to use two places on the decimal and then the cell hits, I like to do 10 to 15 to start out. Uh, shading, we will do 25 as the high and negative 25 as the low. This is in percent, remember that. And then we will do red for the high to say that we're running lean and green to say that we're running rich. Now what we need to do is jump over to our uh, editor and open up our 
mass airflow calibration, which is under engine airflow in general. You'll see it, it's airflow versus frequency, opens up this nice linear chart that's just a straight line. We want to highlight it and grab the column axis, copy those labels by right clicking, and then we'll jump back over to the scanner. We're gonna put that in the column axis here, and then we wanna change our parameter over to mass airflow sensor. This is the one that I was talking about that shows it's this mass flow rate. We're looking for this one down here that's in frequency. That way it lines up. It'll still say, hey, this is the generic sensor. We're fine using that one. And that's it. There is no row axis on these. So we can go ahead and pop out to that and look at it. And if we start scrubbing through some of this data, you can see this is what it looks like. And so, oh, we go out, we do this big long, you know, uh, log, we get all these data. What we then want to do is whenever we're done, come in here and just like everything else, we're going to copy this whole thing, jump back over to our table, highlight our table, and then we are going to do paste special multiply by half. But watch the graph down below. So not a whole lot of changes on there. That's a good thing. That means that you have a fairly smooth graph. If you see any spikes show up in here, say you have something like this, uh, Boom, you see that spike that just popped in there whenever I put 120 in? You need to find that and then smooth out. So you can probably interpolate between those for now and then hit that later on. But so what we're doing is just looking for any spikes, uh, do this two or three times to kind of get everything set up and dialed back in. Whenever you're done with that, that's whenever you wanna come back in, uh, open up your original one as a compare file. I can't do it right now because I can't save this. I don't have a, uh, you know, I can't, uh, save one that's not my own tune file, but you open up your compare file that allows you to come back in and see where these values used to be. So you can re enable dynamic airflow, you can come back in here and uh, re enable closed loop, same ordeal with your temperature control and cut off DFCO. So, all those steps that you did uh, to force it over into mass airflow, you can now go back and fix that. So that's basically it. Pretty straightforward. As I said, this is just like doing speed density. We're just disabling speed density as opposed to disabling the map. It's a little bit simpler and this is a lot quicker to get dialed in. You can get the, uh, the map running honestly in probably about two or three uh, decent runs, decent logs, and you can actually leave speed density locked out of this thing and run just off a of map on a lot of these things and it'll run perfectly fine, especially on normally aspirated vehicles. The mass airflow sensor is great. Uh, forced induction can start causing issues and big cams will also start causing issues so uh, but other than that if you have any questions make sure and hit the comments up down below if you haven't subscribed already why haven't you subscribed hit that button already there's a lot more coming out we'll dive into more specific generational videos to help you guys get on the right track for doing your tuning uh, questions comments you know where to put them throw a thumbs up if you found this helpful if you didn't find it helpful throw a thumbs down but if you do that, do me a favor, post in the comments below why you didn't find it helpful. That way I can provide better content for you guys. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Patreon, there will be a link down below. I appreciate everybody's support that's already signed up. Uh, you know, you guys are helping me out to make sure I can provide you this great content. And uh, I want to thank all the new subscribers, man. You guys are the best. And I'm, I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching these videos. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.